about to show you how I took this photo right here and this photo right here. Here are a couple of things that you're gonna need. Number one, a camera and a lens. Number two, you're gonna need an all white or an all black backdrop. Number three, I encourage you to have a three point lighting system at the very least. You could probably get away with two, but three is the sweet spot. Number four, and probably the least fun, a tripod. Number five, fishing wire. You can get this stuff anywhere, it's pretty cheap. The last thing that you're gonna need is something to hang the fishing wire down from. I cannot stress enough how important it is to prep your product before you start taking photos of it or before you start recording it. These five to 10 minutes could possibly save you hours in post-production. Um, to the naked eye, it's very difficult, but when you, when you use a professional camera with a high quality lens, everything is magnified. So it's very important that you spend the time right at the beginning to prep the product, clean the surfaces, remove any uh, blemishes or any kind of smudges that may be present. I'm telling you, it's gonna save you a ton of time. Please do this. Step number two, setting the stage. Depending on the colors of your product, you can either go with an all white backdrop or an all black backdrop. I think I'm gonna try both in this one just to see how it looks. I usually stick with the all white just because it's easier to work with. Selecting a backdrop really is up to you and your creativity also. Uh, it's up to the client depending on what it is that they want. Um, so don't spend so much time on this if you don't have to. If the client has already defined what kind of backdrop that they want, then that's what you're gonna go with. I try to sway everybody towards an all white or an all black. Here's a pro tip though. An advantage of using an all white or an all black backdrop is that it's easier to play with later on in the edit and also you'll be able to take this same exact asset and you'll be able to use it in composite photos so you can do all kinds of things. Once you've selected the either the white or the black backdrop or whatever backdrop you decided to go with, uh, it's also um, very similar to prepping the product. You're gonna need to prep the stage. This is the exact same thing as prepping the product. You're gonna want to blow off the entire surface, wipe it down with Windex or a cleaning solution with a clean towel, microfiber, if you got it. And you wanna make sure that it stays as clean as possible. Again, I'm emphasizing this a lot because it's really important and it's something that a lot of people overlook, especially right at the beginning. Clean your work area. For this photo shoot, I'm gonna be using my highest megapixel camera that happens to be my R5 with the 45 megapixels, and I'm gonna be using the 85 millimeter F1.2. Now you might be saying to yourself, yes, it's probably a little overkill, but my client is paying top dollars for my services, and with my services are included my high-end equipment gear, so they're getting the best of the best. Actually, interestingly enough, the uh, first camera that I started with was just my cell phone. Truthfully though, don't get too caught up on the gear. Start with what you have, even if it's just a cell phone. Actually, just for fun, I'll take a couple of quick shots with my cell phone. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'll put both photos side by side so you may see the difference. Okay, so you've got everything cleaned up. The product is looking good. The scene is looking good. You've made sure to keep it dust and smudge free. We're gonna be hanging the fishing line to the crossbar or whatever it is that you're using to hang from up the top. Uh, I have to caution you, make sure that you're being safe while doing this. Don't do anything like standing on unsteady chairs or tables. Make sure to use common sense and uh, stay safe. Now that the wire is hung, let's use some scotch tape to attach the product to the fishing wire. Step five, lighting. Like I said earlier, you're gonna wanna use a minimum of three lights for practically all of your shoots moving forward. Whether it's a big production or a small production like this, if you have a minimum of three lights, you're gonna be a lot better off. For this particular shoot, I'm gonna be using three newer handheld magnetic lights. Super inexpensive and you can find this exact one or something very similar 
Uh, links down in the description below. A good rule of thumb is to always arrive to a photo shoot, whether it's large or a small production like this one, with at least three lights. Three lights is gonna be the perfect starting point for any scene. And yes, one of those light sources can always be natural light, but if you have three artificial lights with you, you're off to the races. Now, when you're setting up your lights, it's very easy to spend a lot of time here, but all that I'm trying to accomplish in my specific scene is I'm gonna be using three lights. I'm gonna be using one to light the label as well as I can. I'm gonna be using a second one to light the backdrop. And I'm gonna be using the third one to add as a fill as needed. Step six, this is the exciting part. You get to take the photo now. Now, this is probably my favorite part. Once you've done all of the legwork, you've cleaned the product, you've set the stage, and you've also maintained the area to be as clean as possible. Now you've got the product in place and you're about to set up your camera. So go at it. Take as many shots as you can. Uh, one pro tip that I wanna give to you is to leave your, um, leave your lighting in the exact same area as you're moving your tripod and camera around the entire scene. After you think you've captured enough of that specific lighting setup, then go ahead and set your camera down and start manipulating the lights in different angles to add different effects. When you're taking the photos, make sure to take photos from all kinds of angles, from low shooting up high to high shooting up low. If you shoot down low and shoot pointing up, you give the product a sense of grandeur and you add some epicness to the photo. On the contrary, if you shoot down from the top, uh, shooting downwards, you get a different perspective and it's just fun to have that kind of variation. And uh, another, uh, another great thing to remember is that you're putting in the reps. So you've already done all of the groundwork to set up the scene, to set up the lights that you like, to set up the product the way that you like. You might as well start experimenting with different angles and different perspectives that you could possibly pitch to your client later on as a different type of vibe. It's really important to experiment, especially if you're early on in your side hustle career. This is when you get an opportunity to really get in those reps. You've already done all of the groundwork by cleaning the product, setting up the stage, and lighting it properly, that this is the opportunity that you should take to take as many photos as you can. Uh, within reason, of course, you don't wanna be taking the same photo from the exact same angle. Add some movement, move around, move down, move up, and go crazy. Step number seven, the editing room. Let's go over to my workstation and I'll show you exactly how I get that done. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the photos from our file explorer and put them into Lightroom. So we're gonna jump into Lightroom and start, I'm actually gonna start two applications at one time. Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop Beta because uh, Beta has a couple of the features that haven't been released onto the full version yet, if they'll ever be released actually. But what I'm gonna be doing is going into Lightroom first and I'm gonna be walking through this process here. Actually, by the way, let me know if you guys would like me to go through my workflow with um, my editing process with Adobe, Adobe Lightroom and uh, Photoshop. I can go into more depth if needed. Grab them all. Hi. <laughs> Excuse me, drop them into Lightroom. And now, um, Get, getting everything organized, right? So, yeah, so I have everything separate into different folders with different days. So today I was working on this. So I'm gonna select it again. I date it with today's date. When I do a photo dump, I just label it uh, by the project and then by the specific date. Import all of these, should take a second or two. And now we have 
everything in here. So let's take a look at these. Some of these look pretty good. You can see that there are slight differences. So making the changes of the light makes a, a drastic difference. And then uh, here are the black ones, which didn't turn out exactly the way that I wanted them to. But it was worth giving it a shot, right? We got to try these things. We got to experiment. And now we know that it didn't work as well as we'd like. But the white ones did come out pretty good. So I think I like this one right here. So let's take this into the development tab. And let's just take a look at it. Okay, so that is... This says that it was an F1.2. I think I got a couple of F4s here. Yeah. This is the F4 version. You can see that it is sharp all the way through and through the entire label. So this is the F4 version. And then this here is an F2.8. Not much of a difference, but there's definitely a big difference on the 1.2. So the pomegranate here, it goes out. It's right outside of the focal plane, so that's not what we want because we want the label to be able to be legible all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my favorite, uh, my favorite preset and put this at the orientation that I like. That looks good. I like to straighten up some sides if I can. Oh, that looks really good. Maybe not so drastic. That looks pretty good. Yeah, this is uh, as, as easy as it gets. Now, remember that I had two applications that got open at the same time. One was the Photoshop beta. I've noticed that when I right click on an image, in order to get it from Lightroom into Photoshop, you have to right click on the image and then you have to, uh, what does it say, edit in and then go to Adobe Photoshop. If you do this, edit in Adobe Photoshop, it'll open up, um, if you don't open it prior to, to this, it automatically opens the non-beta version for some reason, but when I edit like this and I have the um, beta version up, it imports it into the beta which is what i want okay so now we are in photoshop and you can see that the string is still visible but in the beta app you can actually hit the lasso tool and then go in and select all of this So let's from here, select all the way up, all the way down, and close it up. And now in generative fill, I'm going to type in remove. You don't have to type anything in, but I've just gotten in the habit of saying exactly what it is that I want. Give it a few seconds, and it should work its magic. And just like that, it's gone. Now, while you're here, you might as well go in and do some more cleanup of here. I like to grab individual um, pieces instead of grabbing multiple things all at once. I feel like the AI does a better job if it's just isolating individual um, non-desirable elements. So I want to get rid of this here as well. It's the underside of the sticker. And let's see how good it does. This is just the power of AI and how sophisticated and advanced this technology has really gotten. Before, it, you need to be a pretty experienced user of Photoshop. And you still do, you know, but it's a lot more user friendly and the barrier to entry is just a lot better. So to not bore you with the entire editing process, here is one image with the white background. 
here is one uh, here is another image with the black background and as promised here is the same shot done with a cell phone can you tell the difference and if so let me know down in the comments below remember not to get too hung up on the gear that you have i personally started with this exact cell phone three years ago with product photography over time i was able to slowly build up clients and slowly build up enough money to purchase my first interchangeable lens camera system if you're interested in learning about the camera that i recommend the most then click on this video right here where i talk about just that until next time Adiós.